Hello, I'm Don McRosty. I live in Shade, Ohio, which is in Athens County, and a little town just south of Athens City. I'm a mandolin builder. I was born in the state of Washington. My father was in the military, and I didn't live there long. I don't even remember it. Uh, we moved to California, where my grandfather was from, and uh, lived around there quite a few years in my really young life. My grandfather was a Finnish carpenter, and I can remember hanging out with him on, in houses. He was using all hand tools, doing trim and doors, and doing a lot of Finnish carpentry work. And perhaps that's where I got the interest in working with wood. I was in the military uh, during the Vietnam War, and when I got out, I uh, decided to go back to college. And I looked at uh, my interest at the time was photography, and Ohio University had a great photography program. Uh, so uh, I came up and uh, uh, got into the fo photo program here in uh, Athens. And uh, I loved it so much. The area was great. The people were great. And I've just stuck around. Uh, my interest in photography uh, has given way to musical instruments, but uh, the area has just stuck with me. The main instrument that most people are interested in is the F-style mandolin. This, this was developed in the Gibson Company by Orville Gibson, the shape. And uh, it's become a real traditional shape, uh, bluegrass uh, favorite style instrument. Bill Monroe is the father of bluegrass, and bluegrass music uh, is, uh, is the style that I build for. He played a Gibson F5 mandolin. It was also known as a lore. Uh, the lore period for Gibson was from 22 to 24, just a few years and those are very prized instruments at the time. Through my building, I've evolved, and right now I'm uh, trying to build replicas of important lore instruments. This instrument right here is a replica of David Grisman's 1922 lore, and it's been nicknamed Crusher. Uh, uh, the project was to get his instrument, investigate it as best I could, and uh, try to replicate it. I built six of them in a batch. He now has one and plays it. Uh, this is one that I keep, and the other are for the public. The wood used in instruments, uh, primarily for tops, is spruce of some sort. Uh, guitars, violins, fiddles, mandolins, piano soundboards have a spruce top. and. Uh, sound travels through spruce faster than any other wood. Uh, it's light, it has a very high strength to weight ratio, so it's ideal for the tops. Uh, fiddles have maple, curly maple backs and sides and necks, and the mandolin has adopted the same thing. This is curly maple for the back and sides and neck. Uh, some of the appointments, like the fingerboard, is ebony. Bridge is ebony. Overlays, ebony, here's a, an overlay. Um, and some of it is, has a purpose and some of it is decoration. The fingerboard, the ebony is so hard that plain, it stands up to finger pressure and lasts a long time. In this storage shed, uh, I have my red spruce. Uh, that pile over there is um, eight eight-foot logs of uh, red spruce and they're cut as pies out of a big round log. A round log like this and half and half and diagonal and you keep cutting it and uh, from that <clears throat> this is this is a top that is out of that wood and it's book matched. It opens up and glues together like this in a wedge and this came out of this. No, oh, welcome to the shop. Uh, this used to be an old machinery shed and uh, had a dirt floor down there. I uh, put concrete in it and uh, insulated it, put some uh, stuff in here and it's become my shop. Uh, a few additions. Uh, over here is just some hand tools that I use in building. Uh, 
chisels and files, clamps and all that. This little setup here is a, a setup that I use for voicing the instruments. An instrument will go on here. And I can put pressure down on the top just like uh, strings will do. And then I can measure how much the top moves with that pressure. As the pressure goes on, the top moves. And that's a method that I've developed over the last 15 or 20 years to control the voicing of instruments. My interest is, at least at this time, is to see if a modern maker can replicate the sound of the old instruments. I don't know if anyone has done it with this type of device. A lot of people make copies, but that doesn't necessarily ensure the sound to be the same. So I measure the flexibility of their tops and backs and uh, build that into an instrument. And I'm told that it's doing a great job of replicating the sound. one bend. And that is this piece right there. The Athens area is really rich with music tradition, southeastern Ohio, in builders uh, and in players. Uh, there's some really great uh, uh, instrument builders that come from this area. Bob White, who lives not far from me. Uh, Dan Earlywine is one of the world's leading guitar repairmen, lives in Athens. Uh, there's just a, a wealth of uh, help on, uh, and interest. Todd Sams builds guitars and lives just down the road from me. Uh, and in addition, there's lots of... Uh, uh, live music in the area, so you can go see people playing your instruments, hear them, and learn a lot from that. Um, it's just a it's just a wonderful area.